What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Rhino 7 guitar modeling tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to make this beautiful transition on a neck through a guitar. I'll switch to rendered view right here so you can see how clean these transitions are in the end. I would ask that you guys drop a like now that you can see how smooth these transitions are. I spent about four months trying to get this uh, as easy as possible for you guys while still maintaining a great surface uh, continuation there. Okay, so what do you guys need to get started to make a transition that is as nice as that? Well, basically what you need is a 2D guitar profile, and there's some specific things that you need to do to make this happen. So what are those? Why do you need these things here? Now, these three lines here are super important, and I'll walk you through how to get those. Basically, what you'll have is kind of your guitar the way you want it, um, you'll you'll draw up the way you think these little guitar cutout or cutouts where your hands are gonna go. You'll draw those up, but then what you'll do is you'll delete them, and what you'll end up with is where the neck ends, where you think the neck will end, and that's pretty good. So what you can do from there is grab poly lines that kind of go almost perpendicular to the neck but a little bit more towards the body to the left there you can see my lines leaning a bit left which is good um, definitely don't have it this way it has to be in front of that point on the neck just a little bit okay so you'll draw those on both sides um, it should look something like that just a little bit of a lean towards the body of the guitar on either way then what you'll do is you'll split your guitar body by these points here and then you can also delete that I'll show you how to get that later as well but basically what you'll do is you'll run an arc blend command um, that connects the horns of your guitar up to the neck and that's how you get that surface there and then to get your cutout today you're gonna run the same arc blend command but just connecting those one thing you want to make sure about is that this big sweeping curve here never overlaps the small cutouts where your hands would be. Okay, that's huge. Make sure they don't overlap all the way to the point. Okay, so that's basically what you need to get started there. And I've also kind of made the uh, depth of my neck here, which for me is a 0.866. You can measure your own neck. I just chose an arbitrary number for today. Okay, so now all we have to do is kind of make a block out of our guitar. So I'm going to join these up here and I'm going to extrude the body of my guitar 1.5 inches tall because that's a pretty standard height. And then I'm also going to loft the two sides of my neck and this kind of gives us a general shape. So you can see where our guitar is going to be and then there's kind of just this void where our little transition is going to be later. Okay, so now that we have our block out, basically what we're going to do is explode the body of our guitar and delete the face that is in where our transition should be. Now, if it's connected up kind of like this, what we can do is run an extract iso curve command. And what that does is basically either grab a horizontal or vertical point on a surface. So we want that to be vertical and go up to where our cut ends and we can simply split our body into two pieces there and delete that. So now you see there's kind of this void um, where our transition will be again. All right, so once you've deleted that face, basically we need to run a fillet edge command here and I'm doing a 16th of an inch today. You can go bigger with that, but I think 16th is a pretty good middle of the road. All right, so once you have that fillet in there, we're going to run an arc blend command. So since we made this uh, big curve using an arc blend, um, we can also kind of create additional curves using arc blend as well, and they will be um, kind of uniform going all the way around. Um, so that's nice. We can run a split command and split the top of that overhang off because we don't need that anymore. Okay, next we can start kind of building the frame of where we want our uh, surfaces to go. Um, so how we're going to do that is basically run a series of arc blend commands. 
and we'll do more of this later um, but for the first ones here we'll want to connect these two surface edges up here so you can see we're connecting that fillet to the bottom edge of our neck and we're going to do that on both sides so we can go over to our other surface edge and select our fillet make sure you're clicking towards the bottom of that arc or else it'll try to match the other end and it won't look right okay so there are those two so now what we need to do is run another arc blend command um, from the bottom portion of our fillets on either side and like I said earlier this is going to be uniform because we made the curve using the arc blend so next we can run a network surface now the reason we're not using Sweep 2 today at all actually is because Sweep 2 does not take into account um, some of the ISO curves of surfaces it's trying to connect to so it won't be as accurate won't give you as smooth of a result so you can see right there we have a nice smooth surface alright so next we need to make our neck and our surface here match and to do that we're going to have to split them into uh, four pieces I believe yes four pieces so how we're going to do that is duplicate the edge of your neck right there closest to the body and grab a polyline that goes from the midpoint to the end so that basically gives us a center line on our neck we need to split that duplicated edge by that midpoint next run an extract iso curve and grab your neck here toggle that to make sure it goes all the way down the length of the neck and click the midpoints on either side of the guitar there or the guitar neck rather so as you can see here we basically have four equal parts of this neck so since we have four equal parts here we need four equal parts on the space where we want to create that transition so again we're going to be extracting iso curves and where we're going to want to put those is of course one in the middle which should be we have an endpoint there that's nice um, so to make sure we can get the midpoint for the other two uh, we're gonna go ahead and split this into two pieces so you can see that's two equal pieces now and we can run the extract iso curve two more times to get the midpoints now so right there for that one and should be around here somewhere midpoint right there okay so now let's split those again so once we do this we will end up with four equal pieces all right so now that we have that curve split into four equal parts you can see here we need to run more arc blend commands that will connect up the four sections of our guitar now when you do the arc blend command command here it's important to go to your front view or whatever view you can see this on and make sure that the line that you've made is not dipping downwards um, so basically uh, we don't want it to I'll see yeah we don't want it to do that if you can see over there in our perspective view how it's dipping downward like that now the way you can tell if it's doing that or not is let's see if you can see my cursor trying to get it okay this white line here basically just needs to be below and we should be fine so we got one there we'll do that on the other side as well making sure that that line does not dip downwards so let me go to my perspective view um, this can be a little bit tricky sometimes okay so that should be good and then we'll do that one more time over here on the middle section and this one we actually might want to go a little bit higher just because it might look a bit more natural but anywhere as long as that white line is below the black line there 
it should be good. So you can kind of see to our brain and eyes, we can start kind of seeing where the surface is going to end up. So we need to give Rhino kind of some surfaces to start with so it knows kind of what to match. So how we're going to do that, first off, a thing we need to do out of precaution here is these kind of connecting arcs we made at the very beginning. We actually have to rebuild these with a three degree point curve. Because as you can see right now, it is in two different pieces. So that would cause some problems later. So an easy way to fix that is just press join, do rebuild, and keep the point count the same, but change the degree to three. And we'll press enter there. We'll do the same thing on this side. You can see it was in two pieces as well. We don't want that. So rebuild, same point count, degree three, done. So now to make this first surface, basically grab either side of those cutouts there, do an extrude curve, and do both sides yes. So we will have it going up and down. And then we can go over here to our right view, and we are going to, uh, you could project these curves right here onto it, or... We could just go ahead and do a split command straight from the right view. So it'll automatically project those curves and split it for us. As long as you're on the right uh, perspective viewport here. So if we do that, we can delete these tops here. And we have our first surfaces, which is great. So we have something to match to here. Now to make this kind of final transition, we also need a surface to match to here. And luckily we can make these with only these two surfaces to match from. So again, how we're gonna do that is a network surface. So we'll just start grabbing surface edges that we can and the other arc blends that we made. You can grab this whole um, thing here, it'll only do this section, as you can see. So again, grabbing surface edges. Anywhere where you have the choice grab a surface edge, I would recommend it. It's going to try to match that up a little bit better. And then we can just keep going here. And since we have two edges to match to here, we can simply grab all of our surface edges here, and it will have a much better idea of what we want it to do. So you can see that's going very easily there. No issues should be happening as long as we've set this up correctly. All right, so that looks pretty much done. All we have to do is kind of split the bottom off here. So I'll just grab these two curves and we can just split that away and we can delete any lines that we don't need. So I can Kind of show you guys the end result here but yeah so you know after all those months of planning it ends up actually being that quick and easy to do which i'm honestly kind of surprised by myself on but yeah we go to rendered view here you can see how beautifully all those curves match up there is no pinch points or anything like that no undercuts which is a big problem i've seen um so yeah this this method is probably the best I've found so far. So I'm, I'm hoping this helped you guys. Um, if it did, please uh, subscribe for more of this if you're interested. It's a good way for me to gauge what you guys like to see and by liking the video. And I love discussing this stuff with you guys uh, down in the comment sections. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Um, yeah, if you got any questions or you'd like to do some commissions, let me know down in the comment section. But that's all I have for you guys today. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.